Here we go. So today we're going to talk about cards that basically punch above their weight and that are the actual best cards in the game to get real value for your MT. Now, 2K are kind of weird when they sort of look at their overalls. There are cards that clearly should have a higher overall, whether it's badges or whether it's just the, the attributes themselves, looking at the offensive and defensive overalls. But there's a lot of cards that just punch way, way above their weight, even to the point where there's some diamonds that if you actually look at the card, are Galaxy Opals. And, and you know, they're going for sort of 40k. So we're going to get into those those cards today. And then I'm going to take some of them on, online to see if they do actually punch above their weight. Before I do that, guys, the response to the last video, it's been sort of five days since I posted a video. The reason is um, we basically got Young Simba on the podcast tomorrow. So I had a few days basically just sorting all of that out. And, and it's going to be amazing. Like, what an amazing guy to come on our second ever outing podcast. If you missed the first one, go back and watch it. Uh, it's a really cool thing to watch while you're grinding XP or anything like that. That's really why we set it up. Um, and the second one's going to be, I think, even better. But the response to the last video I posted, which was how to make my team more enjoyable, was like the best response I've ever had to a video. Like, there's, I don't know, something changed. You guys, your response was just amazing. I was like, for two days, I was just reading these like absolutely amazing comments. It was making my day. And, you know, this is such an amazing positivity at such a tough time, you know, in the world right now. So I, I can't thank you enough. You know, I really appreciate it. And the subs are going crazy as well. I think we're about 65 subs off 500 now. We've got like three or 400 of those in the last few weeks. I'm going to do a 200k VC giveaway. So, you know, tell a friend, drop a sub if you haven't and, and, and all of that. Uh, anyway, let's, let's get on to today's video. So looking at the cards, you can see here, I'm going to start with this Zion. So he's a 94 overall. Uh, I mean, he is expensive. Zion's not cheap. He's kind of unanimously considered one of the best cards in the game. But he's a 94 overall. Now, looking at his, his splits, it's 98 and 93, right? So that's a five difference. So a 2.5 shift. That's 95.5 is roughly where he sits, which makes him a good pink diamond. That's what this Zion is. <laughs> you know, 95.5, he's a good pink diamond. And his stats back all of that up. Uh, I do have a, a shield on him, so it might be inflated by like one, but either way, he'll be at least a 95. Um... His stats just back all of that up and, and his badges as well. So he is a diamond for whatever reason. And the, the main reason is there's this thing called intangibles. I'm actually not sure where it is. I'm not going to bother looking for it. But there's this thing called intangibles in the game, which basically is just a, a random number that 2K assigned to a card to try and get it in a specific tier. So if you play my league, it's the same thing. Like if you look at what some of the players' stats, they could look like a 95 overall, but their intangibles are 20, which brings them down to like a 93. So it's the same thing with my team. So that Zion, you know, for, for a long, long time, everyone said he's one of the best cards in the game. You know, he's a 94 overall diamond. You compare him to like Chris Mullin, who's also a 94 overall diamond. I mean, it's not even close. And the reason is Chris Mullin is actually a diamond. If you look at his splits, what you've got 11 there. So he's actually a 90.5. He's somewhere near an amethyst, actually. He's somewhere between Ruby and amethyst. He's just got a great shot. Uh, his badges pull him up. That's what they do. But you can see really clearly... That this Zion is not comparable with that Chris Mullin. In fact, he's probably more comparable with some of these cards, like Aaron Gordon, for example. There you go, exactly the same splits. So that's where Zion sits. So it's not as relevant with Zion, like I said, because he's an expensive card. But this Rudy, I picked him up again today. Uh, I just want him in my team. This Rudy Fernandez is a 97 overall. If you use maths and a calculator instead of 2K, that is a 97 overall. And anyone who's used this card will understand that he is basically a 97 overall. This card is absolutely incredible. Like a top 10 card in the game for sure. I think he's beat Zion now for being the best diamond in the, in the game. Every stat is elite. He's got badges for everything. You know, eight Hall of Fame badges, including things like Quick First Step and Showtime. I mean, he is an absolutely incredible card. Look at those defensive badges. Um, he is not in any way, shape or, form, uh, shape or form a 94 overall. Now, this card is super important because he's going for about 45k. Now, let me ask you a question. If it said 97 overall on that card, nothing else changed. Just in the top left corner, it said 97 overall. How much would this card be going for? The answer is genuinely over 200k. For sure. Absolutely for sure. With the way the 2K community buys cards, this is easily a 200K card. You know, there isn't a Galaxy Opal going for less than that anyway. And actually, I think he's probably better than Jimmy Butler. I think he's a better card. So he'd probably be going for a lot. 
So it's important to kind of look at the cards objectively. I think we get too fixated on that number, like I said in the top left corner. It's not really relevant to what's going on behind it. You can see how good Rudy is. There are other examples of this as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to tick through, just, just find a couple more. Um, Serge Ibaka is a good example. Let's see if we can find him. There we go. Uh, Serge, 91 and a 93. He's a 92 overall. And you can see a common thread with these cards. Like, Rudy's really popular with comp players. Ibaka was really popular with comp players. The reason is these cards are better than the stats are telling us. They, they understand that this is actually a 92 overall diamond. That's what that card is. Um, and there are, there are plenty of other examples of this. I'm, I'm going to look at some of the rubies as well. Uh, let, let's find Jonathan Isaac. Again, just a really popular card, right? Everyone loves this card. So there's a 12 split there. You work that out. That's 91 overall. Jonathan Isaac is an elite defending amethyst. That's what he is. That is what the card is. I don't know why they've chosen to make him an 89 and, and bring that overall down. Maybe it's the name. Maybe it's a few other things. I don't know. But the, the last example I want to give you is this Fultz. Because this Fultz actually is an 89 overall, I think. Let's have a quick look. So you can see there's a six split there. That is an 89 overall, but he's really popular. I've heard people say he's one of the top 10 point guards in the game. I really like the card as well. Why is he better than, you know, this suggests? Well, it's his badges. Look at these badges. 36 badges. Basically, every one that you would need, including things like range and clamps. Like, his, his badges push him into a, a whole, whole other tier. You compare Markel Fultz, who's an 89 overall... To an 89 overall who's not particularly badged out. Let's just, let's just take this Rod Strickland next to him. Look at that. I mean, he's an 86 overall, so it does work the other way as well, bear in mind. But these badges just don't compete with that Markel Fultz. So the overall between these two cards is the same, but absolutely meaningless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these five cards that I've just shown you online and see whether they play at that level.
So there you have it. They got the job done. Now, guys, I'm going to talk about Unlimited really quickly before I talk about how these guys played. There is something really off with Unlimited right now. Uh, in that game, my opponent got 21 free throws, all from running up to my center and getting bailed. And I didn't green a shot, but I hit nine threes, I think. My shooting's really off. I think I think the game is delayed again in the UK. I think this is a start of every season. It's like this, which is maybe why I'm struggling a little bit more than the start of the season. But every game I've played, basically so far this season, has gone this exact way. It's really weird. Like every game I play, whether it's limited, unlimited, basically every time my opponent attacks the rim, he either gets bailed on on the two points or gets a, a free throw. It's very weird. Very, very weird. I can't remember the last time someone missed a white against me. I don't know what's going on, but it is what it is. Let, let's talk about these cards. Despite all of that, the algo and everything else, uh, the issues I'm having with, with Unlimited at the moment, Rudy Fernandez put up 36 points. He was unstoppable in that game, which really goes to show, you know, I, I ran D-Wade on Limited uh, this weekend and Rudy played as well as him, if not better in that game, to be honest, against a better team as well. Um, so that shows you just how good these cards really are. So guys, the... the Podcast episode two is dropping tomorrow. It's really, really exciting. So please, please show it some love and some support. Uh, subscribe on this channel as well if you haven't already. But I hope this helps you buy some cards a bit more, th sort of bit more thrifty and, and get real value for your MT moving forward. Until next time, thanks for watching.